This chair is a familiar one to you. But ten years ago, when it was designed by Charles Eames, it was a revolutionary new chair, and I must say it caused quite a flurry. First introduced to the public at the Museum of Modern Art in an exhibit made up entirely of the Eames pieces, and since then many more styles of the original have been designed, here are some of the current versions which grew from it. And the designer, Charles Eames, has become almost a household word. And this morning we would like very much for you to meet this very clever designer of this chair, uh, who is really parents, I believe. Isn't this your first, Charles? Uh, we met a long time ago when you were living in beautiful, sunny California. There must have been something very important that's brought you to New York. What is it? You know, it'd have to be important to bring us away from home. Uh -huh. uh, we're in New York to introduce a new uh, chair for Herman Miller. Uh -huh. And we're here so that your home audience can get a first look at it. Fine. Well, we're looking forward to this first look. And did you notice the way Mr. Eames said our and we? Well, uh, that is, of course, because... Almost always when there's a successful man, there is a very interesting and able woman behind him. And a better case could seldom be found than in Ray and Charles Eames. Come on in, Ray. Hello, I'm so happy to see you. This is Mrs. Eames, and she's going to tell us how she helps Charles design these chairs. How do you manage that? <laughs> well, uh, aside from serving as an extreme in the testing, <laughs> there are a million things. But... Uh, I think the most difficult thing is to keep the big idea, <laughs> to uh -huh. be able to look critically at the work. But I'm actually sure this I... applies to everyone in the office, including Charles. Yes, well, I think it's the best, uh, it's almost the best thing to have in a working family is a critical viewpoint of your husband's work so that <laughs> he can improve along with it. Otherwise, he might be stagnant or stand still, which is certainly not the case with Eames. I wonder if you'd tell us some of the highlights of your careers in uh, designing these chairs. How did you happen to get started with chairs? Uh, Ray, do you want to say anything it. about it? All right, Charles. Well, uh, Ray, Ray was a painter. Ray uh, worked here in New York with Hans Hoffman for a long time. Yes. This is a pretty good start. Uh, I'm an architect. I always had a background of an architect, and I don't know if you know... You know, architects think that everything comes under the heading of architecture, whether yeah. it's chairs or space platforms, everything. Yes, even dresses and studios. Oh, by all means, they uh -huh. have structure. Everything is architecturally built. Well, I noticed that each of the chairs that we have here is slightly different in appearance from the uh, original chair. Uh, I wonder if you're going to maybe take us through and show how, how the Eames chair has developed. And, Ray, shall we let Charles do it? Or do you want to help with well, it? Please. No, you see, she, as I told you, she is behind the man, but terribly important. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. All right, Charles, let's start with the first one right here, shall uh, we? I think this would be quite a, a chore. Actually, the, the molded plywood chair is a result of a uh, working with a mass production technique and, mm -hmm. in a way, letting the mass production technique show through in the result. Uh -huh. The case of the plastic chairs, it's... Uh, the object was to take a material which was a high-performance material developed during the war and try to make it available to uh, householders at non-military prices. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And the, the, it's very practical, is it? Uh, well, they made shock helmets out of it. Uh -huh. That would be pretty good. The, the wire and the uh, upholstered wire pieces, these are, of course, old materials, yes. but they're combined in a way to give a high strength, lightweight, and uh, Very high new performance look. result. The, mm -hmm. the things are different, but this doesn't mean the attitude is different. It's just that there was a different objective mm -hmm. you know, in each case. Mm -hmm. I noticed that you have some of them that revolve here. Yes, these, uh, are, these are pivot things. Uh -huh. The swivel chairs, right. which are most attractive and most useful. Uh, during the war, you know, Mr. Eames molded designs were, uh, they were adapted for splints, weren't That's they, correct. for the boys? That and then a... um, you continued along with your designs after that. Is there a basic theory of design for your chairs? Is there a basic theory you could talk to us about? Well, uh, there, there's one. I don't know that I can talk about it. There's, uh, that is, the, the attitude in all of them is, is really the same. We've never designed for a fashion or with the idea of fitting in a fashion and 
the uh, Herman Miller Furniture Company has never, ever uh, requested that uh, we do pieces for a market mm -hmm. or for an annual thing, which is... is you really create your own market, don't you? Yes, and the, the timing is more or less our own. Sometimes it's too, too slow. But we are allowed then to follow it through. We do the graphics and presentation. Yes, you say it's too slow, and yet you've done so much and so many and so much sooner than most people have. Uh, designing interesting furniture, of course, is only part of the work that uh, Charles and Ray Eames do. As I remember, your house uh, shows very well the way you feel about living and the problems of design. And I think if we could see some pictures, uh, Mr. Eames will tell us a little bit about the house. Here we are, Charles. Well, uh, Ray, uh, Ray and I worked on it. We designed it together, of course. Uh, uh, recently, we've made a film on the house. And it's been uh, released at the Museum of Modern Art. Mm -hmm. It's a series of, of films. The, uh, the music for it was composed by Elmer Bernstein. It's a yes. marvelous thing. Elmer just, uh, he did the uh, Man with the Golden Arm. Oh, and, and the music marvelous for the house. score it is, Fantastic. yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's this all... This is beautiful and airy looking, isn't it, in this picture? Well, we think so. It's sort of gotten to be like an old cave for us, <laughs> but... Uh, they're, it's composed of uh, standard factory units. Standard factory units that don't look very standard or very factory in those pictures. That's what your beautification has done for them, you and Ray. Uh, you've also done some of the most fascinating toys, not only for children but for grown-ups as well. And uh, we have something here. I wish you'd just tell us about it, will you? Well, it's, it's, it's a house of cards done from things mainly picked up around our own house. So uh -huh. just... You mean the designs on the cards? Yeah. Uh -huh. And this is sold to buy for children to build their own private houses Children, with. yes, but there's no limit on the uh -huh. age, of course. Adults are children anyway in many respects, aren't they? And, of course, you've been working on the picture The Spirit of St. Louis. I'm curious about what you did precisely in that, with that picture, Charles. Well, uh, I worked with Billy Wilder, the director. He's a, a great man, and Indeed. it's going to be a, a, a real good picture. Uh -huh. I, I did make the furniture for Jimmy Stewart. Or like that. <laughs> I was working with Billy and, uh, and then directed for him some second unit work, mainly the construction of the aeroplane. Uh -huh. Is it going to be an exact replica of the one that's in the Smithsonian? Well, uh, Charles Lindbergh couldn't tell the difference. Oh, well, <laughs> if he can't tell the difference, it must be pretty accurate. Uh, Charles, we know about the materials that uh, you have used for your chairs and that they're basically molded wood and plastics, as you've shown us, and fiberglass and wire and so forth and some upholstered parts. But I think now it would be very nice if we can preview your newest chair. Why don't we just go up here and have a little preview of this. Well, that is quite a departure, Charles, and it looks wonderfully comfortable. Tell us something about it. Well, I, it's uh, rosewood plywood, and it's black leather, and its insides are all feathers and down. But I think it would be a better idea if, if we would just build it for you right here and, and you could see something about it. Can we see this being built? Well, all right, I let's put so. it together.
saying to Charles that I expected when the man's face turned around it was going to be Charlie Chaplin or somebody. <laughs> Didn't it look exactly like those old movies in the... the uh... This is a typical Herman Miller <laughs> employee. <laughs> well, it's just great. You know, I remember a quotation about this unusual couple that I read some time ago. I think describes it beautifully. I may not remember it accurately, but it said that the Eames' desire to move freely in a world of enormous and unlimited possibilities is combined with a very accurate sense of discrimination and taste, which, of course, we always see. This is an ability to select among the unlimited possibilities and return considerable richness to the world, which you both have done. And thank you for being thank here you. and showing us your things this morning. Thank you.